Stencils for SMT assembly A stencil mask is used in many manufacturing processes to make PCBs. This includes SMT stencils which are most commonly used in the process of making printed circuit boards. The use of these SMT stencils varies based on the size and complexity of the board that they will be used on and the type of assembly machine that will be using them. For any SMT stencil application, solder paste should be used for paste dispensing. Advantages of using a stencil method are high yield rate, high accuracy and repeatability, low labor cost, and good surface finish. The main disadvantage is that it is not suitable for mass production or high mix low volume assembly. SMT stencil types There are two types of stencils, including manual and automatic. Manual stencils are available in many materials, such as stainless steel, plastic, etc., while the automatic ones are made from silicon rubber material which has been pre-impregnated with the conductive paste by screen printing methods. Both manual and automatic stencils require cleaning after each use. Cleaning process The cleaning of stencils can be either by hand washing with solvents or ultrasonic cleaning bath. If an ultrasonic cleaner is used, then the dry time must be taken into consideration before reusing a stencil again to avoid a short circuit caused by excess moisture on metallized pads. When an ultrasonic cleaner is not available, the cleaning process should take place immediately after soldering to prevent a short circuit due to moisture trapped under soldered components. It is also important to ensure proper drying of a printed circuit board before applying the stencil. This will help reduce contamination during the next round of the soldering process. How to choose the right SMT stencils for your project? You have to consider many factors when choosing an SMT stencil, including material, thickness, complexity, size, durability, and cost. It's important to do your research before ordering a stencil from a vendor. Stencil application in PCB assembly method The solder paste should be applied to both sides of a printed circuit board with a stencil. After applying solder paste, components are placed on top of it. Soldering is done by passing an electric current through it. This will melt solder paste, allowing it to flow between pads on PCB and component leads. This process is known as reflow soldering. There are two types of reflow soldering, including hot air reflow soldering, and infrared reflow soldering. The hot air reflow soldering uses heated air to heat a PCB and components, while infrared reflow soldering uses IR lamps or IR guns to heat a PCB and components. Both methods can be used for stencil applications. However, the hot air reflow soldering can only be used if there is no need to change the position of components after they have been placed on PCB. If there is a need to change the position of components after they have been placed on a PCB, then infrared reflow soldering must be used instead. What types of designs work with SMT stencils? While most customers using stencil printers are familiar with traditional SMT stencils, it's important to know that there are other types of SMT stencil designs. While each is suitable for certain circuit board and component types, not all of them work with on-demand printing, so there are other factors to consider. Another consideration when choosing an SMT stencil printer is whether or not you plan to print a single part or multiple parts at once. Most on-demand printers allow users to print one part at a time, but if you need more than one per run, it's important to find a machine that can handle high volume runs, as well as quick turnaround times. If speed is your top priority, look for a system that offers a fast setup and take down time so you can get back to production quickly. Finally, be sure to choose a printer that offers interchangeable nozzles so you have access to different tip sizes without having to buy new machines. For example, if you want to use larger components like QFP packages or BGA chips, you might want a larger nozzle size. Similarly, smaller components will likely require a smaller nozzle size. This allows you to switch between jobs quickly and easily instead of waiting for replacement parts to arrive. Of course, you should also make sure that your printer supports all of these features before purchasing. How to avoid overruns on a PCBA Overruns occur when you place too many components on a single layer of your PC board. 
This problem can be easily avoided by using stencil masks to help guide where your components should go. While it's possible to manually transfer the component placement onto a new layer, it's much easier and more efficient to use stencil masks. These plastic sheets are placed over each hole and etched with a laser, creating an accurate pattern that allows for easy placement of components onto layers below. This process ensures that all your components are placed correctly, which will result in fewer problems once you begin assembling your PCBA. When there is not enough space between components, they may short out or interfere with one another. Both scenarios will negatively impact performance and may even damage some parts entirely. To avoid these issues, make sure you always use stencil masks to ensure proper spacing. Additionally, check any design files you received from your manufacturer before placing components, sometimes oversights occur during translation. If you find errors while working with stencil masks, don't hesitate to reach out to a service provider who can offer additional assistance if needed. What are some common mistakes made when using SMT stencils? A stencil is an important part of manufacturing printed circuit boards, and you should choose it with care. Here, we will discuss some common mistakes when using SMT stencils so you can avoid them on your next project. Not knowing how your stencil is manufactured, there are three ways that stencils are made, such as laser cut, die cut, and silk screen. The first two are much more expensive than silk screening but they produce higher quality results. Silk screening has been around for decades and allows people without special equipment to create professional looking stencils that work well for mass production. However, they don't last as long as other stencils. Not checking your board for burrs before using a stencil, a burr is a small piece of metal left over from cutting your board with a laser cutter or CNC machine. It can easily ruin your stencil and make it unusable. You should always check for burrs before using a stencil, and make sure you get rid of them by filing them down with an emery board or some other method if they are present. Not pressing the stencil firmly against PCB, if you don't press firmly enough against your board when applying solder paste, there will be air pockets where components won't be soldered properly. This may not seem like a big deal at a first glance, but it can cause issues later on that could cost you time and money. You should always make sure to press firmly against your stencil before starting to apply solder paste so you get high quality results every time. Using a stencil that is too small for your project, when using a stencil for SMT placement, it is important to choose one that is large enough for all of your components. If you try to use a stencil that is too small, you will end up with extra solder paste on your board and possibly even misplaced components. You should always make sure you are using a stencil that has plenty of room for all of your parts so you don't waste time or money trying to fix mistakes later on. Not cleaning the board after use, after you have finished soldering, you should clean off any excess solder paste from your board. If left on there too long, it can cause oxidation and other issues which could ruin both your board and stencil. You should always clean off your board after using a stencil to make sure you don't run into problems later on. Using a stencil that is too old, while they may seem like they last forever, SMT stencils do wear out over time. You should always make sure to replace them when they start showing signs of wear and tear. Signs that your stencil is worn out include warped edges or holes that are too large for your components. If you see these kinds of problems, it's best to get a new one before continuing with your project so you don't end up wasting money or having issues later on. FAQs Will my SMT stencil last forever? No matter which type of stencil you purchase, it won't last forever. Eventually, all stencils will degrade and lose their effectiveness. What happens when an SMT stencil gets damaged? Damaged stencils pose a serious risk because they could cause solder paste to leak through and contaminate nearby components. This can result in costly repair work and even downtime for your production line. How do I test my SMT stencil to see if it's working properly? To test your stencil, you can use a device called a stencil tester. You can also get professional help in this case. Would like to know more about SMT stencils in PCB or PC board assembly? 
Email us at sales at pnconline.com.